When young people see uh, Dr. King caught in 1963 talking about his dream, what was that dream? When we look at the atrocious numbers of people who are poor and struggling today, King's legacy speaks to that. When we look at people who are dealing with how do we respond to a nation at war, King's legacy deals with that. But we want to expand his legacy to talk about other issues that he didn't necessarily address. So when we do all of that, King's legacy is alive, it's vital, and it certainly applies to young people right where they are today. Would you have any advice um, following the Arab Spring that just hit the, the Middle East mm -hmm. for the rest of um, Africa that, or black Africa? that is still facing some kind of oppression. We see what a year later was happening in, you know, with the Arab Spring and now in the Arab world, in Egypt, we see what's, how difficult it is to really allow freedom to, to take hold. But you gotta start the process. You can't romanticize or demonize Africa. You gotta take it for what it is and then engage the larger world and use every resource available to try to change it. Dr. King said injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So he would have embraced people in the Arab Spring. He would talk about Occupy Wall Street to hammer home the point that people should not be oppressed and that we must open the doors of opportunity for all. His words seem to have the sort of premonition that's so poignant upon every re-listening. Every time we hear them again, well, I don't know what will happen to me now, but it really doesn't matter because I've been to the mountaintop. And you can hear the people responding. <laughs> And he said, I've looked over and I've seen the promised land stretching scene out in a melismatic Sam Cooke like, whoa, that's old school. That's for the old people. Don't worry. <laughs> Dr. King would have warned against the kind of vigilant hyperbole that existed in the aftermath of Barack Obama's ascent to the presidency. From King's assassination to Barack Obama's inauguration, we know that the impact of King's death is monumental, opening up space for the very conception that a black man could lead this nation. He also would have been critical of him. That was his role. That was his job. He's a prophet not a politician. Some people think that Barack Obama is Moses when his job description says he's Pharaoh, which means then that you're in the business of occupying political space to bring about the greatest outcome for the most citizens in your nation. That means compromise in a way that prophets find problematic. I think that Dr. King would have been deeply uh, troubled by the persistence of inequality and he would have pushed rather vigorously for the relief of the most vulnerable in our, in our society. Neither the Democrats or Republicans speak about poverty. They keep talking about the middle class like everybody middle class. There are millions of poor people in this nation. And Martin Luther King Jr. loved them and died with poor people. Martin Luther King Jr. opened up this rhetorical resistance to American culture. At its best, hip-hop tells the truth. Elvis was a hero to most, but he never meant to me. Straight up racist, the sucker was simple and plain. Mother him and John Wayne. Already I'm hyped because I'm amped. Most of my heroes don't appear on no stamp. You want to find something that you are engaged with and engaged in, that's something that keeps your interest. Um, because some of you are gonna look back on this time in your lives when you were revolutionary and radical, then you go up and have kids and stuff. I was gonna transform the world. Now I'm a corporate lawyer with 10 clients making half a million dollars. I wanna come back and visit you then, <laughs> right? Because life is like that. But the point is, you evolve, you grow, you deepen. Let's end the bigotry against young people. I know they, some of they sag in their pants like they live in Sag Harbor. <laughs> Maybe if you lift their hopes, aspirations, and dreams, their pants will follow. <laughs> hey. Martin Luther King Jr. didn't just change black people, he changed America. He made white people more human. He made white civilization more tolerable. And he brought the humanity of black people to bear. But he refused to give up on white brothers and sisters and said there is something dignified and beautiful in the consciences of America when we can appeal to those consciences to transform America.